Hallo und herzlich willkommen zu Coffee Break German. Welcome back to the Coffee Break German Show. Ich bin Marc. Ich heiße Thomas. Wie geht's dir, Thomas? Übertrieben gut, Marc. Dankeschön. <lacht> Übertrieben gut. Now, I know why you're saying you're over the top good today. Yes, because you know the topic for today, don't you? We're talking about umlauts mm -hmm. and all those sounds <laughs> like. The S, the Us and the Us. Yeah. So we're going to be practicing our pronunciation in this episode, learning more about how to make those sounds. And of course, this episode is part of a series of weekly episodes where we're helping you take your German to the next level. One coffee break at a time. Now, if you're watching the video version and you can see my beautiful coffee break German mug here, you can get your very own mug. There is a link underneath this video and you can enjoy your coffee break, learning German and drinking your coffee or tea or whatever you like to have in your mug. There is also a link if you're listening to the podcast, then you can head to coffeebreakgiftshop.com and you'll find the mugs there. And as Mark just mentioned, if you're watching this video on YouTube, then please remember to subscribe to the channel. Or if you're listening to it as a podcast, also subscribe to the podcast feed. Okay, we know what we're talking about. Shall we get started? Yeah, lass uns anfangen. Thomas, where did umlauts come from? Umlauts. Glad you mentioned this. I like to describe as vowel harmonies. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Vowel <laughs> harmonies. So explain, please. <laughs> so originally, and I actually didn't know that until I did some research for this episode, they come from the difficulty of pronouncing an A, O, U and an E sound in the same word. Okay. So because A is very open and E is very closed. Mm -hmm. People eventually got lazy and they changed the A to an E, which is a slightly more closed mouth. Mm -hmm. And then also that actually means that all words today that have an umlaut, an E, Ö or Ü, had an E sound in it originally. But okay. then language changed and quite often that E disappeared from the word. Can you give us an example of one of these words? Because I think you've got one here. Yes. So if, for example, a word for geese in German is Gänse. It has that E sound. Mm -hmm. But the old German word for Gänse was Gansi. Gansi. And it okay. had the E at the end, so it changed to an E, but then over time the E disappeared. Yeah. And now we're left with Gänse. Gänse. Okay. So that's the letter A, the first letter of the alphabet, A. Genau. <laughs> with an umlaut on it. And when we say umlaut, we're talking about these two little dots. Genau. <laughs> two dots above the letters. So if we've got an A umlaut, how does that sound in German? So to give you an example, it would be, for example, in the word Äpfel. 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 Yeah, Äpfel. It's a funny sort of sound to explain to English speakers because we don't really have that exact sound in English. It's kind of similar in some ways to certain words, but of course that depends on where you come from and how you pronounce these <laughs> words and so on. But if you listen carefully to how Thomas says this word, then you'll pick up this sound. And we're going to go through a lot of practice and you will practice it as well. So. Okay. Um, Äpfel. And we'll leave a space for you to say that. So, Äpfel. Äpfel. And another one that has a slightly, like, I would describe it as a short A sound is like Hände. Hände. So that's hands. Genau. Mm -hmm. So, Äpfel, obviously, apple. Mm -hmm. Hände, hands. And we'll talk a bit more about, like, where you find these umlauts in German. Mm -hmm. There's also a slightly longer pronunciation of the A. Mm -hmm. For example, in the word ähnlich. Similar. A ähnlich. And there's an H there in genau. the, after the E umlaut, yeah? Yeah. So, ähnlich. Ähnlich. Mm -hmm. And another one would be the word for a buck, which is Käfer. 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 So make sure you're repeating these after Thomas, not after me. I am a learner here and you need, to, <laughs> you need to repeat after Thomas here. So we've had apples. Äpfel. Hands. Hände. Similar. Ähnlich. And bug. Käfer. Okay. Is the E sound always pronounced like that? Unfortunately not. Of course <laughs> it's not. Of course it's not. So there's there's a few exceptions where it's actually more pronounced like an E sound. Mm -hmm. And that is, for example, the word Käse. Or oh, cheese. Genau. Mm -hmm. And also Mädchen. Mädchen, a girl. Genau. Okay, so Käse. Käse. Mädchen. Mädchen. Okay. Genau. A few more exceptions. Okay. There's also the combination of the A and that is followed by a U. 
Oh, that's like oi, isn't it? Genau, and actually the, the area where I come from in German is the Allgäu. So Allgäu. It has the, uh, U is oi. Oi. Okay, Allgäu. And I think that's an easier sound for a Scottish person, oi, <laughs> to pronounce. <laughs> Indeed. Indeed. You would also find it, for example, in the word Moise. Is that like mice? Yeah, exactly. Plural of mouse and then plural Moise. Moise. Am I right in thinking that we see that pattern quite a lot? where we've got the singular word without an umlaut, but then we get the plural word that does have an umlaut in it. Exactly. And especially on words that only have one syllable. So mm. you think like mouse, and that if changes that in the, if it has an A, O, O, U, it very often changes into an umlaut. Okay, so mouse, moise. Moise, genau. Right. Okay, so that's E, the A with an umlaut. Yes. What about O with an umlaut? Ö. <laughs> Ö. <laughs> so... <laughs> Again, I think you can kind of like distinguish between like a shorter ö, mm -hmm. which would be, for example, in the word öffnen. Öffnen. So to open. Genau. Mm -hmm. Öffnen. Öffnen. Another word that I am sure you've heard before is können. Können. A short one there. And that is like to be able to. Genau. Ja. Or, or can you. So können Sie bitte hier bleiben? Can you wait here? Can you stay here? Genau. Perfect. Okay. And we also have the slightly longer one mm -hmm. that, for example, you find in the word Öl. Öl. Does Öl mean beer? Uh, no, not in German. It means like Sonnenblumenöl or Olivenöl. Oh, like oil. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> öl is, is, is beer in Swedish and Norwegian. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But Öl, oil, okay? Genau. Oh, and also a popular or a very common one is schön. Schön, so beautiful. Yeah. But those ones are long Ö sounds. Genau, so we had the öffnen, mm -hmm. which is short, and then the Schön oder Öl. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, are there exceptions with her or is it more I didn't come across any to be fair actually. Okay. So I think it's really those short Ö and the long Ö. Okay, which sounds pretty similar. I mean, it's just like a kind of extended version of it. Yes, I also maybe slightly exaggerating it when I pronounce the long one. So it's like mm -hmm. Öl, Olivenöl. Olivenöl. Okay. We've got Last one more, one. <laughs> and I actually think this is probably for learners and English speakers at least the most difficult one to to sound to make. Yes, I've also found it a lot, and it's the sound. <laughs> <laughs> Now, there's a tip for how to yes. how to make this sound if you find difficult to make. Do you want to explain this tip, Thomas? Uh, yeah, and so they say when you make the sound e, and then you just purse your lips full, so you're going from e to u. <laughs> it looks <Yep>. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> we did say that we'd be looking at, at, at lots of pronunciation tips here today. So, e -u -u -u. so let's hear it in some words. Yes, for example, the number fünf. 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 That's five, yeah? Genau. And it's quite a short. Ü. Yeah, another example would be also Müll. Müll is uh, like trash or rubbish. rubbish. Yeah, yeah, genau. Mm -hmm. And again, again, you have uh, words that it's pronounced a little bit longer. For example, Tür. Tür. Can I the door? The door, yeah. Tür. Mm -hmm. Or üben, because we are all here to üb our German. Yeah, to practice. Genau. Yeah. Üben, üben. Okay. Right. What else do we need to know about umlauts? Um, you may be where you find them in German, mm -hmm. because quite often they can make a difference. I'm sure you're aware of the example like schon already, mm -hmm. but schön, beautiful. beautiful. Yeah. So it's just the two dots that really change the meaning of the word completely. Yeah. So we talked a little earlier about how we use the umlaut, sometimes in the formation of plurals. Yeah, we've seen maus, mäuse. Yeah. It's the same with haus. Häuser. That's right. And, and we also see it with the other ones. For example, we've seen Hand, Hände. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Or if you take an example with an U, Zug, Züge. Zug, Züge. So Zug, Trains. Train with uh, just a normal U and then yeah. Züge with an U, with an umlaut uh, for trains. Genau. Okay. Uh, it's also used a lot when you form the comparative. So faster, better, mm -hmm. stronger. So okay. For example, Groß, Größer. Groß, Größer, okay. Genau, or arm, ärmer. Ärmer. And it's again, it's this idea of one syllable words that have an A, O, or U mm -hmm. that change into an umlaut. Okay, and arm means? Poor. Poor. So ärmer, poorer. Genau. Okay. We also see an umlaut when we are talking about certain verb forms. Yes, that's true. 
for example, with uh, Faden, which we talked mm-hmm. uh, in one episode before, it was Ich fahre, aber du fährst. Yeah. So strong verbs quite often change uh, into normal as well. Okay, good. Very useful to practice so you're able to pronounce it. Indeed. Now, there's one final thing I want to talk about here before we leave umlauts, and that is how to write an umlaut on your keyboard. Now, it's going to depend a little yes. on <laughs> what kind of system you're using. But do you want to explain here? Um, the easiest if you have a German keyboard, because then they actually have the umlauts on the keyboard. Exactly. If it's an English keyboard, I think it depends on the Mac. You can press the U button or the Alt and U, and then you get the two dots. Yep. And um, there's also different hotkeys, but you can always get around it by just adding an E, so a yeah. German E sound uh, after the vowel. That's right. So if you are if you use a, an Android or an iOS phone, uh, then the chances are you can just hold the, the, the vowel down and then you often are able to swipe up to choose your Gives particular you your options, yeah. option. Um, but as Thomas said, it's perfectly acceptable in German to write the E, the letter E, after the A or the O or the U, if you don't have an umlaut on your keyboard. Genau. And everybody will know what you mean. And it's like grammatically and otherwise completely uh, correct and accepted. So there you have it. Umlauts, all you need to know. We hope that you have enjoyed this lesson about umlauts. And if you'd like a written version with all of the words written down so that you can compare the words with the umlauts and without the umlauts, then you can do this on our blog. There's a blog article for this episode and you'll find the link for that in the description. Also, if you'd like more help with German culture or grammar or pronunciation points, please visit coffeebreaklanguages.com slash German. And also subscribe to our newsletter to get free regular email lessons. We will be sending one out very soon. So if you sign up, you'll be getting your next email very soon. Look out for that in your inbox. But for now, vielen Dank. Thomas. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Bis zum nächsten Mal. Oh, sehr gut. Ja. <laughs> Und natürlich, natürlich, happy coffee breaking. Ganz genau. You have been listening to a Coffee Break Languages production for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2023, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording copyright 2023, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved.